Fifth grade ELA text at 12, Achieving a Dream. This is a biography of, of another athlete with a dream, a woman who dreamed of becoming a champion shot putter. Who knows what the shot, shot put is? It is an, an athletic event in which the athlete pushes a heavy metal ball as far as possible. The title is Long Armed Looty and the First Woman Olympic by Jean S.L.S. Patrick. Here she is on the cover. Any idea when the first women's Olympics happened? What clues does the cover provide? No one really knows how Ludie's arm got so long. Maybe too much tug of war in with the dogs. Maybe too much hauling waters of the hogs. Look out below. Or maybe too much swinging from the tree branches with all her sisters and brothers hanging on. Come to think of it, maybe that's what made Ludie's arm so strong. So right away, what do you know about Ludie's childhood? And what does the author want you to know about Ludie's arm? When Ludie set off for Winthrop College in 1917, she was six feet tall and skinnier than a Caroline Pine. In fact, if she turned sideways, you'd think she had disappeared, but you could always spot Ludie on the athletic field, sprinting, scoring, supporting, and cheering. In every sport, Ludie used her long arms to encourage her teammates, you can do it. During her final year on the track team, Ludie tried to shot put the, the shot put. Give it a ride, urged Coke Bar Bartlett. Ludie scooped up the heavy iron ball and placed it between her fingers. She bent her knees, pushed her long arm upward, and released. The ball scored across the sky. He throws was her throw was as long as three automobiles. Thundering cannonballs. Unbelievable. Her heartbeat boomed. Her long arm tingled. She loved the explosion of power. So Lodi trained to become a shot putter. Every muscle needed to be strong. She lifted dumbbells till her arms turned to noodles. She ran till her toes cried for mercy. And she, tried, she did so many leg squats that her feet disappeared in the dust. She wanted to become a champion. All that lifting and running and squatting paid off. So did you know how I read that? All that lifting and running and squ squatting. The author dropped the G's at the end of those words. Why do you think the author wrote it that way? At a Winthrop College track meet in the spring of 1922, Ludie surprised everyone. She set an American record in the shot put with a throw of 35 feet, 6, six and a half, four inches. And before you could say Carolina Cannonball, Ludie and Coach Barlett hopped on a train. They headed north to an important track meet in New York. There, the best athletes could, would try out for an international meet called the Women's Olympics. When they arrived at the tryout meet, more than a hundred women were running and jumping and throwing. Ludy eyed the muscular shot putters. Did she even have a chance? Give it a ride, urged Coach Barlett. Judy placed the iron ball between her fingers. She focused, pushed, and released. The officials measured the announcer boom, 35 feet, 11 inches. Miss Lucille God Godbold was set a new American record. Coach Barlett flung her clipboard in the clouds. You won, she cried. You're, you're headed to the Women's Olympics in Paris, France. Ludie whooped. Ooh la la. She broke her own record. Cloud bust, busting cantaloupes. So what do you think of these exclamations? How would you describe that voice? But Ludie's smile soon sagged. I'd love to go to the Women's Olympics, she told Coach Barlett. I'd be honored right down to the tips of my toes, but I just don't have the money. The train ride back to South Carolina was quiet. When they arrived at Winthrop College, nearly 1,300 women welcomed Ludie home, cheering and stomping to the floor sprouted splinters. Ludie was stunned. She couldn't bear to tell them the bad news, she, so she pushed out a smile and kept on training. More lifting, more running, more squinting, squatting, more putting. 
Sweat dribbled down Ludie's ankles and into her old shoes. More than anything, she wanted to go to the Women's Olympics, but how would she come up with that money? It would be impossible. Ludie crattled the iron ball in her hands. It felt as heavy as the world, maybe even heavier, but Ludie hung on. So it felt as heavy as the world. What does that simile tell you about Ludie's state of mind? One morning, Ludy ran past President Johnson's office. He opened the door and whooshed her inside. Good news, he said. Winthrop's 1,300 students and teachers are donating money so you can go to France. Ludy's skinny backside nearly slipped off the chair. She'd be going to the Women's Olympics. I promised to win, she vowed, not just for myself, but for everyone helping me. For the next two months, Ludie trained twice as hard at the Women's Olympics. She'd have, to, she'd have to throw with both of her long arms, first with her right, then her left. On August 1st, Ludie climbed the gangplank of the Aquatini for the six-day voyage to France. She took, shook her hands with her new coach, Dr. Stewart. Would, would he be strict? She smiled at her new teammates. Would they be kind? The ship began to rock and sway, blubbering codfish she'd have to train on board. More lifting, more running, more squatting, more putting. Ludy only fed one to the fish. When Ludy and her new friends reached Paris, ooh la la, every morning they practiced for two hours, but in the afternoons and evenings they opened their eyes to the world, the battlefields, Verosols, the Louvre. The pastry shop smelled like heaven, but Dr. Stewart only allowed them to drool. The night before the Women's Olympics, Ludie lay awake in bed. The moon, round and shiny, stared through her window. Ludie stared back. Was she good enough to win? So what do you think? On the morning of August 20th, 1922, Ludie entered Pershing Stadium for the Women's Olympics. 20,000 fans roared from the stands. Ludie's teammates handed her old glory. When the wind tugged, she gripped the flag higher, tighter. When the Americans cheered, she lifted it higher. That afternoon, Ludie faced the best women shot putters in the world. She knew the hardest fight would come from France's world record holder, Violet Grodd Morris. Violet stepped into the circle and pawed the ground with her toe. She heaved with her right arm. She heaved with her left arm. The two throws were added together. Total distance, 65 feet, 1 inch. A half inch gulp. Ludie's long arms wobbled like French custard. How could she beat that throw? Then she heard Dr. Stewart holler. Now, Ludie, you show him what you can do. Can do. Ludie thought of Coach Barlett and her 1,300 friends at college. She thought of her family back home. Give it a ride, she whispered to herself. She placed the iron ball between the fingers of her right hand. She focused, pushed, released. She placed the iron ball between the fingers of her left hand. She focused, pushed, and released. Total distance, 66 feet, 4 and 1 eighth inch. inches, cried the official. Miss Lucille Godbolt of the United States is the winner. The American flag shot up on the pole. The band blasted the Star Spangled Banner twice. Ludie's heart swelled. Tears leaped from her cheekbones and bounced off the curve of her smile. She had set a new world record. That evening, Ludie and her new friends received two, their medals. After the banquet, they ate so much French pasty they nearly popped. Ludie wanted to wrap her long, strong arms around every person who had helped her complete, compete at the Women's Olympics. Thanks to the big hearts of so many, she had become a champion. So how much of Ludie's victory do you think was due to her own talent and hard work? And how much was due to the people who sub supported her? And then this is just some more information about Ludie.